Greetings and blessings to you, my brothers and sisters, wherever you are in the four corners of the world. May the Lord truly bless you. It is a privilege once more to welcome you to the Herald Report YouTube ministry. My name is Kuzai. Today we have a special topic in the storm, under the cloud. In the storm, under the cloud. Shall we pray? Eternal Father of mercy and compassion, this is the time and the opportunity to open your word. May you speak, dear God, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, this is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. I'm going to actually, I've done some series called The Wilderness Experience. I'm going to record this series in about a few weeks time, actually looking at the wilderness experience. We are in the wilderness at the moment. But now today, the topic in the storm, under the cloud. Listen to verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would note that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all did the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Picture this wonderful experience. The children of Israel are traveling from Egypt. They are leaving the best place of Egypt. They are leaving Goshen. They are leaving civilization and they are entering into the desert, the most challenging and difficult experience. But you know, in, that, in, in their journey, remember, they are being led by the cloud. The Bible makes it very clear that they were all under the cloud. When you go to the book of Numbers, chapter 9, verse 16, looking at the experience of the Israelites, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. This was the inauguration of the sanctuary, the, the inauguration of the tabernacle in the wilderness. And it was covered by the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. And this is the cloud that followed them all the way. Let me keep reading verse 17. The Bible says, and when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, they then after that, the children of Israel journeyed and in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed, and at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched as long as the Lord, the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, the, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in the tents, and according to the commandments of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from even unto evening, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night, that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Picture this. The tabernacle is associated with the um, commandments of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the cloud, the presence of the cloud accompanied them from Egypt. But now you realize that in the tabernacle, in the, in, in, in the desert, as the, the sanctuary was inaugurated or the, 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 the tabernacle was inaugurated, now the cloud was associated with the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. When the Ark moves, the cloud moves. When the ark is stationary, the, ark is, the cloud is stationary. It was as if, you know, there was a connection between the two. But I'm going to come back to that. But let me actually go to verse 22. It says, or oh, whether it were for two days, were two days or a month or a year, that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon the children of Israel, abode in the tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. Now God is leading they are under the leadership of God. They are coming from Egypt. They are going all the way to Canaan. The road is not easy. There are challenges. There are difficulties. But the cloud is leading them. Now, this is a very important thing. God is leading the journey may be rough, but the presence of God makes the difference. Remember the Bible says in Psalms 20, 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, Psalms 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of fear and death, but as long as the shepherd is guiding, the shepherd knows the best route. When he learn, we learn from the book Patrick's and Prophets, page 282, he says, looking at the way how the children of Israel were being led, 
And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of cloud to lead them the way. And by night in the pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. Now, if God is leading, if God is guiding, if God is directing, if God has championed the path, is that not the best thing? Where God leads is the best, for he will not withhold any good thing, neither will he bring evil upon us. God is a merciful and loving and compassionate God. And the Bible makes it very clear in the spiritual prophets that during the day, he was a cloud. During the night, he was a pillar. And they were all under the cloud. Let me move further, my brothers and sisters. It says, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night. From before the people, says the psalmist, he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. Psalm chapter 105, verse 39, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 10, which we have read. There is nothing as good as being led by God. There is nothing as good as understanding the language of God. There is nothing as good, my brothers and sisters, as uh, realizing the tokens of God in this spiritual journey. Now, it says uh, the standard of their invisible leader was ever with them. The standard was ever with them because they could see the cloud. They could see the pillar of fire. Not only that, they will receive manna every day and also they were drinking from the rock. The standard of the invisible leader was always with them for the ark of the covenant was with them. And say by day the cloud directed their journeys or spread as a canopy above the host. In the desert is hot. In the desert is challenging. In the desert is painful. And during the day, the cloud was a canopy to give them shade. I'll, I'll conclude with that. It served as a protection from the burning heat and by its coolness and moisture afforded grateful refreshment in the pitched thirst desert. That's why there was not even one feeble among them. Nobody was sick because of the desert. Nobody struggled with the desert. They had the cooling from the cloud. By night, it becomes a pillar of fire. It gets very cold at night in the desert. But the cloud, this it turned to the pillar, it be the pillar of fire. It gave them light and it gave them warmth. And this was the divine presence among them. They had a great assurance. Why? Because God himself was directing them. There is nothing as good in life as allowing God to take over your life. Psalms chapter 37 makes it very clear that the steps of a good man are ordered by God. When God orders your steps and when you follow the leadership of God, your life is a great blessing. Following the leadership of God does not mean the absence of problems. It simply means that when problems come, there are better solutions because the cloud is leading we are in a desert, in a barren land, challenging situation, but we are under the cloud. Now it says in uh, PP page 376, uh, paragraph 2, God himself, God himself directed the Israelites in all their travels. The place of their encampment was indicated by the descent of the pillar of cloud. And so long as they were to remain in the camp, the cloud rested over the tabernacle. When they were to continue their journey, it was lifted high above the sacred tent. A solemn invocation marked both the halt the and the departure. Now, what was this solemn? It was the movement of the ark. Now, my brothers and sisters, I will ask you a question. Who directs your life? As for the children of Israel, the cloud directed them. And it was God who was directing them in the cloud. And they focused on the cloud. As long as their eyes were on the cloud, they knew where to go. They knew when to go. They knew where to pitch their tents. The challenge that we have today is we've got many directors. And sometimes as the children of God, we choose to direct ourselves. 
we choose to listen to advice from colleagues and friends. But the cloud is the best direction. The cloud may not lead us where we want to go, but the cloud always leads us to the best place. If God is not there, my brothers and sisters, don't go. But when God is leading and you realize the leadership of God and God is guiding you, though the place looks barren as a desert, that's the best place to be. Numbers chapter 10 verse 34, the Bible says, And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day, and when they went out of the camp, and it came to pass when the ark set forward, that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. Now the children of Israel traveled their journeys. The ark was with them. The ark represented the, co the, the ark had the co commandments of God in them. As long as they abide by the commandments of God, as long as they walk with God, as they long as they do the will of God, the cloud was a blessing. When they disobey the commandments of God, the cloud was a curse to them. My brothers and sisters, let me come home a bit. The moment we are walking with God, and we decided to leave God. We are we the protection which protects us. We actually leave the, the comfort zone of the protection and we are left vulnerable. As long as we abide by the commandments of God, as long as we abide by the principles of God, as long as we trust God, we have the protection of God. But when we move out of that protection, the law of the Lord is our protection. We are left vulnerable. So now when the children of Israel are said to be under the cloud and the cloud is associated with the ark, it means that they were walking according to the commandments of God. They had nothing to fear. But when they rebelled against God, the cloud destroyed them. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 10 makes it very clear that it was uh, many of them they fell in the wilderness why it was because of their unbelief the cloud actually the blessing that which was meant to be a blessing to them it turned to be a curse when we are being led by god when we have understood the principles of god as long as we walk with god our life is a blessing but when you leave the principles of God, my brothers and sisters, then definitely we would have left. In fact, let me actually clarify this point I've just mentioned. The protection of God is confined within his law. The blessings of God are in accordance to his law, his commandments. Now, when we leave the standard or the platform of the commandments of God, those things which could have been a blessing to us will become a curse. That's exactly what was happening in the wilderness. As long as the children of God remained faithful to God, God was a great blessing. But as they left the commandments of God and decided to follow other things, there was death, there was pain, there was sorrow in the wilderness. This is exactly the same thing which is happening in our lives even today. My brothers and sisters, God is always leading. God is always directing. But sometimes we leave him and we try to follow other things. The question is, can we hear his voice? And when we hear the voice of God, can we follow him? Numbers chapter 19, verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 19, the Bible says, Yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsook them not in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night, to show them light, and the way therein they should go. As long as we remain with God, we have nothing to worry. God will lead us. God will direct us. And then verse 20, Thou givest also the good spirit to instruct them, and withheld not thy manna from their mouth, and givest them water, for their thirst. So when the cloud has led me, and the cloud is leading me to a desert place, the cloud is led me, leading me to a barren place. When I'm there, the cloud will provide manna. When I'm there, the cloud will provide water. When I'm there, the cloud will provide warmth. When I'm there, 
the cloud will provide all that I need. <laughs> For the singer says, all our need, God supplies. My brothers and sisters, let's allow God to lead our lives. And we are not, when we allow God to lead our lives, the Bible makes it very clear. Now I'll go to verse 21 and say, Yea, 40 years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. 40 years receiving manna every day. 40 years clothes did not grow old. 40 years not even one sick. 40 years, not even one struggling. My brothers and sisters, this God is able, and God is able to do it today, and God can do it today. The question is, are we under the cloud? Life is challenging. Life is difficult. Life is painful. But my brothers and sisters, God wants to show himself strong in our lives today as long as we are under the cloud. The cloud is providing the cloud will sustain. The cloud will ensure that all our needs are supplied. The question that I ask myself is, this God who was in a cloud, who came in form of a cloud, can he be trusted today? Is the cloud still leading today? Am I under the cloud? Is the cloud moving? Remember, the journeys of the Israelites, they will move according to the cloud. Now the question is, can I see the cloud? Can I see the direction of the cloud? Can I see when the cloud moves? Can I see when the cloud is not stationary? My brothers and sisters, it will be a catastrophic thing in our life when the cloud has advanced and we remain where we are. When the cloud has advanced, and we remain in the same position when the cloud is advanced. We will be left on our own like Mordecai and Esther. And it will be a very challenging situation. You know, with Mordecai and Esther, the time had come to go and rebuild Jerusalem. And they remained in Persia. And it was not good. My brothers and sisters, let me go back to the spiritual prophecy. Part Prophecy, page 377, paragraph 2. It says, as they advanced, the way became more difficult. It was tough, but they had to advance. And the cloud was leading. The, the, the command was just say, go forward. Just follow the cloud. The, the route, it says, their route lay through stony, raven, and barren west. All around them was the great wilderness, but the, quest, the, the, the command was just follow the cloud. A land of desert and pits, a land of drought and of the shadow of death, a land that no man passed through and where no man dwell. That's Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 6, but the, the, the command was follow the cloud. Should I follow the cloud in pain? Should I follow the cloud in a barren land? Should I follow the cloud when I can see things are so difficult where the cloud is leading? It is the best thing to do, follow the cloud. As they followed the cloud, it says, the rocky gorges, far and near, were thronged with men, women and children, with beasts and wagons, and long lines of flocks and heads. Their progress was necessarily slow and toilsome, and multitudes after their long encampment, were not prepared to endure the perils and discomfort of the way. The reason why today many of us will remain in the cities, it is because we believe it's too difficult to go in the rural district. We want the easy transportation. We want the easy life. But my brothers and sisters, is life without God, it's a cursed life. It's better to go in the desert, to the desert with God, than to remain in Egypt without God. Egypt was a center of civilization. There was everything in Egypt, and children of Israel were blessed immensely and greatly in Egypt, and the Bible is very clear about that. But when the time had come for them to live, God took them through the desert and it was best place for them. 
As long as God is there, my brothers and sisters, where he leads you is the best. It may look barren is the best. It may look challenging is the best. It may look as if you are living the comfort, the paradise of earth. But my brothers and sisters, as long as God is leading is the best. Under the cloud. The storms of life may be raging, the challenges and difficulties, the pain. But as long as God is leading is the best. That's why the singer say, all the way my Savior leads me. When my Savior is leads me, I have nothing to ask. Can I doubt his tender mercy? He has been a guide even in the time past. He's still guiding today. God will supply all my need and he will give me comfort, joy, and happiness even in the challenging and difficult situation as long as my eyes are focused on him. Under the cloud. Spiritual Prophet, page 318, paragraph 1 says, The mighty angel who went before them was the Son of God, Jesus himself, the great I am, as we learn in Exodus chapter 3. He evened the path. He evened those gorges, the rough gorges. He evened the path and he allowed the Israelites to pass through without any problem so that their feet did not swell. For 40 years walking, the feet did not swell. For 40 years walking, the shoes did not worn out. It was the majesty of heaven who subdued and restrained the strong and dangerous beast of the forest. Oh yes, he can do it. He can subdue the dangerous beast. He can subdue the challenges and painful situation of the earth. The strong and dangerous beast of the forest as well as the poisonous serpent that infested the wilderness. Yes, they were safe. God did not take away the problems, but God protected them from the problems and he was with them in the problems. Have you ever been in a storm, my brothers and sisters? Have you ever been in a challenging situation? God does not take away the challenging situation, but he allows us to swim through the challenging situation. So the children of Israel did not realize the thousand dangers they were preserved from in, the, in their travels because they were kept from them. God protected them from a thousand dangers. How many dangers has God protected us from? We don't even know, my brothers and sisters, but one thing for sure is that our lives can be, we could be facing difficulty and challenges. But as long as the presence of the Lord is accompanying us, there is a battle raging that we cannot see. And this battle is taking place within the realm and the forces of good and the forces of evil are fighting. But we are safe because we are under the cloud my brothers and sisters i've argued or i've actually put this statement i've read it somewhere the blessings of god are not geographically located they are spiritually located where his children are he pours his blessing where his children are they are accompanied by the blessings so do not fear to go into the desert because God who blesses will go with you. Do not fear to go into a challenging situation as long as God is leading you. He ensure that he will supply all your needs according to, your, to his riches in glory. This mighty angel leading them was the son of God himself. The book CET, page 204, says, In review of our past history, having traveled over every step of advance to our present standing, I can say praise God. As I see what God has wrought, I am filled with astonishment and with confidence in Christ as leader. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us in his teachings in our past history. There's nothing to fear for the future unless we have forgotten how he led, how he protected us, how he sustained us, how he empowered us. Our God is an all-season God. He's an all-weather God. He does not change because of environment. He does not change because of circumstances. God is still the same. We change, but God does not change. 
God gave this promise to Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5, way after the Exodus. Listen to what it says. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and a smoke by day and the shining of a flame, flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. My brothers and sisters, the cloud is still leading today. Can you see the cloud? Can you follow the cloud? Verse 6, And they shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a ref place of refuge, and for a covert from stormy and from rain. My brothers and sisters, I want to read this other quotation, which is in Patrick's and Prophets, page 290, paragraph 3, says, The path where God leads the way, may lie through the desert or the sea, but it is a safe path. What we need today, we want to be led by God. We want to go through a safe path. But the question is, who determines a safe path? Is the presence of God. We may be going through the desert. We may be going through the sea. We may be going through all kinds of things. Sometimes in the mountain top where everything seems to be good. Sometimes in the valley when things are so difficult. But my brothers and sisters, God is still leading in the way. And as God is leading in the way, there is nothing to worry. Now, when we learn from the, we learn from the book uh, Testimony, volume uh, 4, page 23, says, the wonderful pillar of cloud had accompanied them in their wanderings and served to protect them from the fervid rays of the sun. Day it, sun day, it had moved grandly before them, subject neither to sunshine nor storm. And at night it had become a pillar of fire to light them on the way. You know, this cloud did all that could be done for the safety of Israel. But in uh, 1880, Vernon G. Charlesworth decided to put this in a song. And the song said, The Lord's our rock in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever you betide, a shelter in the time of storm. This is a mighty rock in a weary land. A cooling shed on the burning sand. You know the sand of the desert is so painful. It burns. Those sand dunes. The wind of the storms of the desert. But this faithful guide on the pilgrim blend is a shelter in the time of storm. But now when you go to the second standard, say a shed by day and a defense by night. A shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm. No foes afraid. A shelter in the time of storm. Should I fear anything when I'm with my God? And then verse 3 says, The raging storms may round us beat. The storms of life may beat. The pains and challenges of life may beat. But we have a shelter in the time of storm. We never leave our safe retreat in a shelter in the time of storm. But stanza number four say, O rock divine, a refuge there, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, my Lord, you the shelter in the time of storm. Are you in a storm? If you are in a storm, the question is, are you under the cloud? If you are under the cloud, my brothers and sisters, the cloud will shelter you in the storm. The cloud will allow you to go through the storm. The cloud will preserve and protect you. In these last days, my brothers and sisters, we need to remain under the cloud. It may be as if we are going the wrong direction, but as long as the cloud is leading, that's the best direction. It may be as if we are doing wrong things as long as the cloud is leading. That's the best thing to do. 
we may be leaving the civilization of Egypt to go into the desert. As long as the cloud is leading, the best is yet to happen. Mighty rock in a weary land. Cooling shed on the burning sand. He is a faithful guide for the pilgrim band. For those who are heading to the promised land. For those who are heading to Canaan. A shelter in the time of storm. Shall we pray? Merciful Father of faith, mercy and compassion. Our faithful guide in the time of storm. Be our helper, be near to us, and guide us, we beseech you. In Jesus' name, amen. May the good Lord bless you. May the Lord, good Lord guide you. And I look forward to see you once more in our next presentation. I encourage you to share the message, leave a comment, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Until then, please remain under the cloud as the Lord is leading in Jesus' name. Amen.